Hello everybody, back today with another learn, copy or avoid. What do you want to learn, copy or avoid in professional golf swings? And I've got a great one for you today, it's Dustin Johnson. Welcome back to another swing analysis where I'm going to try and help you to understand the things that you have got a chance of copying from these great players and the things that you really are going to have to avoid because it's just uh, a bridge too far. Um, when we're looking at Dustin Johnson, I think uh, everybody will look at his kind of uh, the strangeness in his golf swing. It doesn't look so orthodox, uh, but he gets such massive distance and control on the golf ball. I think it's something that we'd all love to be able to copy if it was in, in any way possible. So I'm really looking forward today to actually kind of taking his swing apart and actually seeing exactly what we can learn from it, where he gets his great distance and, and how he manages to, uh, to get the club back onto the ball with that strange hand position at the top. When Dustin starts his swing, he actually starts it with his hands as though from this position it's difficult to actually see. He's actually lifting up. You'll see that a little bit better from the frontal position. But that means he's actually kind of starting it back with his wrist before his body actually starts to turn. But when it does turn, it's the upper body and shoulders that start in plane. So it's very orthodox really at that stage in the golf swing. In fact, when he takes the club back up to where the most of us would actually stop a kind of 90 degree shoulder rotation, then everything looks pretty normal. I mean, his, his bum's back, his axis is being held, his shoulders are in plane. It's really a really great position. And you've not, there's a hint of what's going to happen next in his, in his left wrist. But otherwise, you wouldn't really be looking at here being anything other than orthodox. The difference is where we mere mortals stop Dustin carries on. That means he carries on with his hip rotation, his shoulder rotation, and more to the point, he carries on with his arm movement. And there's more lift than I would like to see in the backswing here. So his left arm is actually lifting up into a steeper angle than his shoulders. So although he's still got his shoulders on plane, his left arm is becoming steep, and that's when his left wrist bows down. Now he says he does this totally intuitively and he's always done it and I kind of think this is kind of a little bit of kind of the feeling of getting, keeping the club behind him and getting it more over the right shoulder because if he were to keep the, the left wrist straight then obviously he would have the feeling of having the club more over his right ear. So obviously from this position at the top of the swing with the left, left wrist bent back this far. The question is how is he going to stop this closed face from just hitting the golf ball to the left hand side. All right, you can get a little bit of a hint of what's going to happen next when he starts his downswing. His hips are turning back and his bum staying back which is exactly what we want to be doing and his right shoulder is coming down which is exactly what we want to be doing. And what he manages to do is to keep his arms up. So in this position, normally gravity to a certain extent will be pulling our arms down, getting the right elbow kind of docked in. But he's actually keeping his, his uh, right elbow bent and his left arm up close to his chin at the start of his back downswing. So he's getting back to kind of parallel in the hips and his arms are still up under his chin. As he rotates further down, the left, le the left wrist remains bent backwards but his, and his spine angle is perfect. He's got the center of his chest in exactly the same position as it was at the be beginning of the swing. He's getting his hips turned further around and he's lifting his right heel. Now I think uh, if you remember when I was talking about McElroy's swing, what I like is him kind of keeping the heel on the ground because it kind of gives him an anchor. Dustin's got to actually get as much rotation in his hips as he possibly can in order to get this club face back square and to, this, to a certain extent keep it open. And that's how he does it. So he's basically lifting up the, the right hip which will, or right heel which will help him to get more rotation in the, in the um, hips. And because he has such a massive X factor as a difference between his shoulder and his uh, and his hip rotation, he's still pulling the club down and at this point when his hips are almost pointing at the target, the club is still only more or less at hip height. It's an amazing position really. So when he then goes into the impact position, he's basically 
got his chest so far open in comparison to its starting position and his arms are still so far back you can actually see a great big hole between his lower right arm and his left arm. You could drive a bus through that but the, this is helping him to hold this club face off and bring it square into the golf ball. It's also de-lofting the club because of the, the, the bend in the wrist. He's got, his, he's got a lot of lean on the golf club and it, the golf ball just is going to go off low and like an exocet. It's really a very dynamic movement. And at the same time, he's moving quickly. I mean, obviously all of these pros look like they're moving slowly, but in relation, because of the length of his arms, the height of his body, he's really moving at a great, tremendous lick, especially with the golf club as he comes into this, into this position. And it's the most athletic position probably in golf, even if you compare it to people like McElroy and Co. From the front view, you can actually see how he starts the backswing with the hinge of his wrist. Fortunately, he realizes quite quickly that that's not a good idea and goes for a more orthodox rotation in the upper body. So by hip height, he's really kind of demonstrating his athleticism. There's hardly any movement in his lower body and he's got around about kind of 50, 60 degrees of rotation in his shoulders. So there's not been another change in his wrist angle, but you can see he's kind of moved the shoulders across and the, and the club is getting up to kind of stomach height without any real problem. Majority of you are going to be kind of struggling to get past kind of thigh height, I would imagine, uh, before your thoracic spine is getting blocked by your hips and at which stage you've got to move your hips to get the club any higher. So the rest of the backswing really is all about athleticism and this guy he's just keeps rotating and when the majority of are stopping his hips and shoulders are going further and he's got a massive amount of of shoulder rotation as well as his sign of kind of signature left wrist I mean, there's no way i'm getting anywhere close to that and i would not recommend you trying to do it either unless you work in a circus so at the top of his golf swing Dustin's already done a little bit of a squat. You can actually see him he's gone down, whereas McElroy will tend to do it kind of at the start of his downswing. Johnson's kind of done it at the top of his backswing, so in the second part of his backswing, he's allowed himself to go into this squat, loading the ground, getting ready to kind of attack the golf ball. And then you can actually see this part where his hips come back and his, his arms and upper body almost stay, almost increasing this X factor, increasing the tension in his body, the, the dynamics in his body and getting really to kind of release the golf club through the golf ball. So that by the time he gets down to kind of hip height, you can still see the kind of distance between his knees. When he's at this position, he's got massive stability. The center of his golf swing is still where it was at the beginning of the golf swing, so his axis is totally stable. He's got this massive lag in the golf club, and of course, his left wrist is still arched back, holding this club face closed. And his kiss keeps rotating around until he gets into that fabulous kind of impact position where he's got so little loft on the golf club. He's got this massive amount of force and then the force just explodes through the ball. Now here you can see the left leg straightening and resisting the force of the arms which are straightening through the golf ball. When he gets to this position, he looks so orthodox, it's incredible. So we know what's kind of gone on before, but this looks totally natural in engulfing terms. Great position. Then as he goes up further, he actually kind of dips a little bit again in the left leg, which gives us this curious idea and almost kind of, I have the feeling that he's kind of trying to stay in this spine angle. Again, not something that I would necessarily encourage you to do because at that stage you want to be allowing the golf club to overtake allowing the energy which is still in the golf club to be kind of dispersed through your entire body, um, which is obviously going to be a great deal more healthy than, than kind of fighting it and trying to stay in this spine angle, despite kind of all of the forces 
trying to pull you out of it. I remember watching uh, Dustin Johnson at the BMW Open in Munich uh, a few years ago when he came over, and I think he hit a five iron off a tee which flew off like a one iron and, and carried about 200 plus meters. Um, I've never seen anybody hit a golf ball with that much force, uh, with the exception of maybe Joe Miller, who's a long drive specialist, but Dustin Johnson's doing it with every club in the bag, so it's pretty impressive. Obviously, um, he's an athlete. I think he probably could have played any sport he wanted, but fortunately for us, he chose golf. Um, but he's not somebody who you can copy just per se. You're never going to get the same kind of shoulder or hip turn in your backswing that he does. It's not necessarily advantageous to hood the club with your left wrist unless you get into a similar position with your, where your arms are so steep that it will actually help you to keep the club a little bit more behind you and on plane. But because when Dustin swings a golf club, he keeps his axis and he keeps his shoulder plane when he starts his downswing, he's just basically pulling the arms back down into plane and getting the club into the ball. And by allowing his right foot to come off the ground earlier than I would actually like, um, he's able to open his hips and shoulders further than usual, holding the club face open and allowing him to deliver the club square on the golf ball. One of the beauties, obviously, of any swing which has kind of that amount of kind of personal uh, ability and a personal idiosyncrasy is that he'll have a good idea of where his misses are going to go and he can use them. And I can remember him doing a video for one of uh, the other guys on YouTube um, explaining basically, you know, that he's got an awful lot of um, shots in his bag, but he's not changing his swing at all. He just changes his setup position, which is something we should all really learn to do. Don't tinker around too much with your swing if you're trying to shape the ball. Just set up differently, change your grip, grip or not necessarily your grip, but the alignment of the club face. And that's all you should really need. A great champion, a great player, and somebody who has got a lot of things you can copy and a lot of things you just won't be able to. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you did, please hit the like button. Any ideas for the next person in the analysis, then leave them down below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, then please do so. Uh, I'll leave my philosophy as ever up here if you're interested in my further thoughts on the game of golf. Uh, look forward to seeing you all very shortly. Cheers for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>